Yeah, still crops a little bit. <laughs> okay, I'll lean a little bit here. All right, uh, once again, uh, BK here with BK and Understanding for vlog entry number four, uh, the BK at you vlog. And I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about our upcoming single release and music video for the song uh, Naylor Irby Game Love. And uh, before I continue, I'd just like to remind you guys that uh, it helps us out a lot if you could subscribe to this channel. Um, we cannot monetize it until we reach at least a thousand subscribers. And at the time of this recording, uh, we're sitting at 35 subscribers, so we have a good way to go. <laughs> so if you could subscribe to this channel, hit the like button on this video if you enjoy what you heard, and uh, hit the bell notification so you get the notifications. And um, also, uh, if you want wish to support us, uh, the best thing you can do short time, uh, short term financially is to purchase our music from our band camp. And uh, we hope to be able to offer physical media uh, CDs, maybe eventually uh, records and stuff. Um, but at the time of this recording, Bandcamp is where we sell our music. And uh, shows is where we sell physical items, uh, handmade CDs and uh, t-shirts. So come see us play live to get some of those things. But anyway, uh, if you could uh, do those things to help us out, we sure would appreciate it. Okay, so as Seth mentioned, uh, October, Friday, October 15th, 2021. Uh, the next music video is coming out for the song I wrote for a former co-worker of mine, uh, Miss Rhonda Naylor, and uh, we used to teach together. And this song uh, that appears on Basil Keystones features female vocals from one of our former students from that school we taught at together, uh, Cheyenne Mayo. And man, we are just so proud of the song and we're so glad she was able to participate and join it. And both uh, Miss Naylor and Cheyenne are in the music video. So please, uh, you know, set a reminder here on YouTube uh, to, to, uh, to remind you to watch it on Friday when it comes out. Or if you see this after October 15, 2021, go check out that music video. Um, we are Beacon Understandings, a do-it-yourself band, and uh, we have made some do-it-yourself music videos. However, um, I'm the Terrible, Rides This One Trick Pony. We did hire uh, the Traveling Mike Productions company out of Steamwell, Texas to film and edit that music video. They did an excellent job. Um, and then this one for uh, Naylor Irby Game Love, we hired D. Thomas Productions to shoot it. So that's why th those two are the probably the most superior at the time of this recording uh, in quality of our music videos. Um, I shot I Don't Want to Die uh, myself. <laughs> Uh, with a little bit of help uh, with loved ones and friends and family and stuff. But I shot that one almost entire. Actually, I shot everything entirely on a Canon Rebel T6. It is not made to shoot music videos. It doesn't even have an interactive uh, touch screen on the back of it. It's really just a cheap uh, portrait camera is what it is. But it does shoot video. So that's why there's a lot of blurriness in, in some of the scenes in that uh that music video that I shot, uh, I Don't Want to Die. I'm very proud of that video. I think it turned out pretty good given uh, the inexperience of me and what I had uh, accessible to me. And it was really rad of our friends, uh, the Mangrums, to let us use their backyard to shoot some of it. And uh, yeah, and all the people who participated, we are glad to have them part of the music video. Anyway, that being said, um, Naylor Irby Game Love uh, is coming out October 15th and uh, please watch it. And the single is going to be up. I already have it set right now at the time of this recording, and I'm recording, gosh, what is the day? October 6th. Um, I already have the uh, pre-order set for the single, and I put five tracks on that song. So real quick, I want to uh, show you uh, what that's going to look like and give a shout out to the artist. Um, my mom actually made the uh, artwork for this, this single release. Uh, she volunteered to do it, and I think she did a great job, and I just want to say thanks, Mom. Love you. Appreciate you doing this. And uh, anyway, so this is what the single cover for Nayla Early Irby Game Love will look like. Right here. That's for uh, the Bandcamp page. So, 
I just printed that out on my home printer so I could hold it out and have it here on the for this video. And then here I even made a back cover. Uh, it was draw again. The artwork's by my mom, but uh, I put text on it and made it, you know, squared it up so I could use it as a back cover. And here's what that looks like. And this is uh, my mom's uh, drawing, a doodle of uh, Naylor Irby, a tennis match, which we focused on for the music video. So there's those two things. Again, this is what it's going to look like on Bandcamp. This is the official version. Um, and then also, we did send it. It's being, it's still, there's been some mix ups with uh, Ditto Music Distribution. That's who I use for digital releases. And uh, I think it's because I'm still, there, there se seems to be the most confusion when I have featured artists on there. So because Cheyenne was, is featured in the single Cheyenne Mayo. I think it causes their system to flag it and create confusion, but waiting on approval for them to send it to stores, make sure everything is fits to their criteria. But I, I ended up splitting it into two singles for digital uh, release on streaming services just to help with this confusion. So there's going to be one single uh, of just the band and, and without Cheyenne, and this is what that artwork's going to look like. Okay, I had a vote at the time. I added that text on there, the Naylor Irby Game Love, and this dark green was the most popular one. Um, so that's what that's going to look like. And then the digital release of the versions uh, that does feature Cheyenne, uh, it's going to look like this. And I went with uh, colors that uh, symbolize the school that uh, Miss Naylor and Cheyenne and I all met at. So that's what that's going to look like. Anyway, just want to give the talk about that a little bit and uh, encourage you to go check it out. I'm excited. And uh, that today's video will be short and sweet because of that. Just again, please, if you get a chance, uh, check it out. Naylor Irby Game Love. I'm very proud of that song. I guess I could real quick give a recap about that song. So and when I wrote it, I was still teaching high school English with Miss Naylor. And she invited me to play at her wedding because I had launched BK and Understanding with JR uh, in 2017. And I believe that was that was either before or after. I don't remember what year she got married, but she asked me to play at her, her wedding. So I prefer playing original music. I don't like doing covers. I mean, Well, kind of. I mean, sometimes I want to play covers that I feel like playing. Like You know what I'm saying? Like if you're a musician, you always want to do that, like, Last show played a couple of Neutral Milk Hotel songs, um, just because I wanted to, and like, I played Two Headed Boy and uh, and an Aeroplane Over the Sea. I love those songs. I wanted to also do Oh Comely, but I didn't have time to sit down and make sure I had that ready. It has a lot more lyrics to it, even than Two Headed Boy, which has a lot of lyrics. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, aside from those types of things, when I want to do a cover, I I don't like just going places and playing cover songs. And it, it's a weird thing here in the United States where everyone wants you to go and play cover songs and like they really want you to sound exactly like the recording, which is impossible, first off. And secondly, it's like, why don't you just play the jukebox? And so I don't get it. I'm very disconnected with that. Like when I go see live music, I don't go to see people replicate something I could listen to on, on a record over and over again. Now when I was younger, that was more tempting when I was a kid. And there's something about that. And I think it's because of how cons the, the consuming of music is, you know. You get conditioned for that kind of studio perfection, that flawlessness. So then when you aren't used to seeing live music, you go. And too often I remember being disappointed because it wasn't like I was stepping into uh, the album experience. It was a live music. Okay, this is real people and they're out of time. Um, sometimes they miss notes. And, but the, but as an adult, I've come to really appreciate that, the humanity of it. And nowadays, it's the opposite for me. Like, I am not up to date with rock music right now. Like, I call it, uh, maybe this is already outdated by now, but I call the rock music uh, 21 Pilots Rock. I'm not a fan. Like, it, I don't like that. It's just not my cup of tea. No offense to 21 Pilots. They're obviously doing well. And all these pe young, younger people are always tell me how awesome they are and stuff. I'm not a fan. I don't. I just, it's not my cup of tea. It's nothing against them, and but part of it is just I call it. It's just so dang sterile. Like it's not rock music. It's not organic. It's like everything's perfectly quantified, and it's so like it just sounds digital to me. It doesn't sound real, 
And that's rock music should not be like that. And that's why rock music has, has lost its prevalence. You know, like the big genres right now, the biggest one, I guess, would be rap, pop music. Those are the two biggest. In a country, you know, it stay, steadily stays at the top. And here's the deal, like, there's a few genres of music that should not be perfectly quantified and, like, over-polished. And rock music's one of them. Country music is one of them. Uh, blues is one of them. And then folk music, you know, it shouldn't be that way. Now, can you do that stuff? Sure you can. But as a general rule, no, they should not be over-quantified and perfect. They shouldn't. If you're talking about progressive metal or something like that, that might be different because they're, that's what that appeals to, like like that perfection like in, in seeing how amazing the musicianship is. But generally speaking, just rock in general, it should not be perfectly quantified. It makes it boring. You're like, oh, it sounds, computer, it sounds fake and unrelatable. And so... That's like, for me, even if I'm listening to Dream, Dream Theater, for instance, I usually am lo looking for live audio or live footage because then I can appreciate the perfection and appreciate the musicianship because I'm seeing it being performed and it sounds flawless, you know? And that's when I can appreciate it. But the reality is it's alive. It's not perfect. It's not... Everything's not syncopated perfectly like a computer did it. It's, it's not unnatural. So... And, and that's not anything against, you know, those genres, but that I'm just explaining kind of a dynamic there. So, anyway, uh, I don't remember how we got off. What were we talking about? Anyway, oh, live music. So, I'm always about playing original music. So, when Rhonda, that was a long rabbit trail, I apologize. So, you know, she was getting married, and uh, she asked me to play, and so I did pick some covers. It had to be stuff I knew, because uh, part of my tweaks are, uh, you know, my little nuances is I really have to have time for the song to sink in before I can replicate it. An example would be in 2012 when I was playing at a coffee shop and uh, that Hey Ho song by the Lumineers was new and I'd never heard it. It was so new at the time I hadn't heard it yet. And so some of the people who were playing with me at the time wanted to cover it. And I had the hardest time learning it because the strumming pattern wasn't my natural strumming pattern at the time. And I hadn't heard the song enough for it to soak in and for me to absorb it. So I have to have time to do that, uh, to really get to know things and let them sink in before I can replicate them, before they can organically come out of me. And so I did pick some covers that I could play. The only new one at the time I think I learned was uh, Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran. I played that there because I knew that was such a great song. They would, they would like it. And I'd ask her before if she liked that song. She said she did. But I also had written Naylor Irby Game Love for them, and uh, I don't, honestly, I don't remember if I actually ended up performing it. I don't remember if I did, but I had it ready to go in case uh, they could. And so I wrote it for her wedding. And in Naylor Irby Game Love, um, I used a tennis match to encapsulate their love story. So their true love story, this is my version of it, not theirs, but from what I remember, and, and it, it's fact, but this is my version of their story. They have their own version of their story because they're the ones who actually lived it. So this is me uh, being alongside them, you know, and seeing them uh, outside of them. You know, this is my version. But uh, from my knowledge, uh, the way that uh, they met was through Miss Naylor's uh, tennis uh, league teammates. They recommended she go out on a date with this man. And so that's how it kind of happened. And and then they hit it off, and now they're married, and they're in love, and they're a great couple. They're a lot of fun to be around, and I always enjoy hanging out with them. And uh, so that's kind of, so I used a tennis match to playfully encapsulate their story and in a song and uh, what, less than five minutes, I think? And so all that, you know, a long-winded way to say that it, I use some humor, I use some tennis puns, and uh, there's a few different ways you can analyze a song, uh, but it, ultimately it is a love story between uh, Miss Naylor and Mr. Irby, and who have now formed Naylor Irby, I suppose. But uh, anyway, please check it out. I hope you uh, you know check out the song too. If, man, if you can afford to uh, purchase the song on our Bandcamp page, I'll put the link below. Uh, first to the single, and then also just to our Bandcamp page to make both easy to access. And if you can, can man, if you want to support us, and if you can afford to, just buy you know buy our music from us. And uh, then stream it wherever you want, as much as you can, <laughs> you know, because 
you know, that streaming does create residuals like radio did, uh, but they're just so small. Uh, the thing that really helps us is when you buy our music from us. And as previously mentioned in other videos, most of your subscription fees to music services stays with the companies that do that. So, uh, yeah, so please go to our band camp, check that out. Please subscribe to this channel. If you liked what you saw and you got this far along, I'm willing to bet you liked it. So please give us a like, you know, for those logarithms. And uh, please click the notification bell to, again, help us. At the time, we only have 35 subscribers, so we need to hit at least 1,000 subscribers. And so many, I don't remember how many hours of view time before Google now will let us monetize this channel, which is very important. We need to be able to monetize this channel uh, because every little bit helps in today's music industry. Uh, and we are an independent band, a do-it-yourself band, and we are authentic. We're not pretending to be things we aren't, stuff like that. So anyway, hope you enjoyed, and please check out uh, Naylor Irby Game Love. Please check us out. Thanks.